Today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with Kyle Bates, a Portland-based sound artist and musician that records under the name Drowse. Music publication Pitchfork said Kyle's most recent album joined a grand tradition of Pacific Northwestern gloom. And it's interesting to me that there's so much gloomy music coming from our region, it's becoming a genre to those reviewing it. And it made me wonder how artists like Kyle are staying productive through our darkest time of the year, and if they're maybe creatively drawing from our moody winters. So continuing in our seasonal depression week's theme, we're talking with experts about how to guard our mental health during these short winter days. It's Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. So why do you think there's so much, you know, quote unquote, gloomy music that comes out of Portland or the Pacific Northwest? I don't think there's like an active scene of people who are like, oh, let's like get together and celebrate this sad (laughs) stuff or whatever. (laughs) But I think if you want to link it to the weather, like, sure. I, I think, of course, that atmosphere gives us something but I think that also gives us like an excuse to stay inside and a lot of the people that I know who like make this sort of music Mm -hmm. do it solo or or like solo recording people stay in their bedrooms and record things what I'm saying is I don't think I've ever called my music that before but Uh like you said it has been something that's put on it by reviewers what I associate that with is something that's slow and sad and maybe has a lot of atmosphere in terms of like dense soundscapes or for me also that lo-fi thing is like somehow tied in to this uh, idea of like hiss like tape hiss or something is like a good metaphor for that or sonic metaphor you know what I mean I also just think there's sort of uh, like a legacy of that kind of music in the Pacific Northwest in general, not just Portland, you know, the microphones in Mount Erie. And like Grouper living in Portland and then like there's also all this metal. I think metal was the influence for me growing up. Like Wolves in the Throne Room was a band from Olympia. There's a Portland band called Velvet Cocoon. Mm-hmm. You know, it goes back to like Modest Mouse and stuff too. There's There's been a lot of sad, slow music from this area. Yeah, when I was uh, going to school in Olympia, I hung out with like a lot of um, musicians that were from there, you know, and they were like, pop punk could have never been made in the Northwest. Like, even when they're talking about metal, they're like, when you think about the metal from the Northwest, it is like what you said. It's not like speed metal. Like, speed metal yeah. comes from the Bay. <laughs> yeah. Speed metal comes from, like, sun. And, like, pop punk comes from, like, yeah, da, 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 you know, and they're so happy. But even when it's melancholy, you're still just like, I'm having a good time. I mean, even Nirvana and their fast songs, you were still just like, God, this is so depressing. Like, this is, you know. This is not like anthemic, epic, we're going to win music. It's like, it's like, we're going to lose, but yet (laughs) we're going to (laughs) lose, but maybe in a positive way, but just like, but isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Um, But what I wanted to talk about was just like how our winters are long, but yet we have such a thriving community of creative people. What is it about the Northwest? Because I remember when I first moved up here, people were just like, oh, the Northwest is really creative because it's so great. <laughs> for, for me, I guess I actually feel calmer from like a big gray overcast sky. Mm-hmm. And like since I've been in L.A. for school right now, it's like I'm missing that so much. And um, yeah, I guess personally, like living in Portland, having like an overcast sky and not having the urge to go out, like it just gave me lots of days to just be like, okay, I'm going to write my songs. I'm going to, I'm okay with having a blanket on and just like writing lyrics or whatever. And like most art is a pretty solitary thing. And so like having a lot of excuses to be indoors and be by yourself, I think leads to a lot of creativity. What about nature, do you think? Oh yeah, in terms of like being inspired by the sublime, yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for me of course you know we're sandwiched between the beach and like a beautiful mountain and you can like drive a few minutes and feel really great and inspired for me that's also like not necessarily like i'm gonna go write some Walt whitman poetry 
Yeah. But like if I'm feeling blocked creatively or if I'm feeling like I need to get out of my head, like I can just drive a little bit and see something beautiful. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Um, like I said, whenever I felt crazy, just like you were saying, like I just felt like this was too much. I would go to the coast. Just like when the sky looks like it's falling into the ocean and you can't see the horizon line because it's just like gray, gray. And that would just like bring me such like peace. Yeah, it like really opens you up. Like um, on the cover of my most recent draws record is like a picture of Cannon Beach, Haystack Rock, but it's all like misted out. And it, it kind of has like this look that you're talking about where it's like almost monochrome. And that feeling that you're talking about of being like going to the ocean. I'm bipolar, so, like, I have, like, some freakouts, and I have really bad anxiety, and, like, I have used that exact same experience as, like, a way of trying to escape that is, like, I'm going to go to the coast Mm -hmm. and just look at the water, and, like, like you said, that gray-gray is cool because it's, like, a big blank void or something that you can project those feelings into, but, yeah, also, it's just oddly calming, like, the wind, any repetitive sound, I feel like is going to give you something or like, at least like, I don't know, help erase some thoughts. Yeah. Can you describe a scene where you've witnessed and how you turned that into a song? Um, in terms of like places on that I mentioned on the record, there's a song called ashes over the Pacific Northwest. That's kind of like sort of a fantasy image of me burning some journals with my friend. That was the thing that happened, but then imagining the ashes like flowing over to different places that have been special for me in my life, like uh, like Whatcom Falls, like in Bellingham, or yeah. then like Rocky Butte in Portland is another spot. That one's referenced directly too. Why do you think people want to listen to music that might be a little slower or atmospheric um, when they're sad? Like, rather than something upbeat to cheer them up? I mean, I'm the worst for that because I'm always drawn to, like, the slowest and saddest stuff if I'm feeling bad. And, I, I mean, I think it's just, like, to commiserate with someone else and, you know, f- f- be like, oh, someone else is in a dark place too. That makes me feel less alone. Uh, usually and also like the sound of a lot of this music is like that is like wrapping your ears in a blanket especially if it's something like grouper where it's like a full spectrum droned out thing it just feels good and Mm -hmm. almost like sensory deprivation i feel if you have headphones on it's like so good for anxiety what about you do you are you drawn to sad sounds if you're sad you know um what's really weird is when i'm sad my I, sensory wise, I get a little overwhelmed, so I can't even listen to music. Oh, really? Yeah. So I actually listen to uh, podcasts or audiobooks, and it makes me start thinking about something else mm. in a way like that. I'm just like, I get excited again about the world because of this fun fact. Oh, nice. So it's like an idea. It takes me somewhere else. Yeah, it's really weird. I think when I was younger, um, it was definitely like I needed music to like cleanse my soul if I was like feeling anything too much. But mm-hmm. now as I've gotten older, like I don't know what it is. I don't know if my mu- relationship to music changed um, or what it was, but I actually do miss it. Like I miss that, like what you just said, that comfort mm-hmm. of yeah. gaining comfort from listening to somebody else and relating to them as an artist or whatever. <laughs> no, I'm this I'm the same way with like with listening to podcasts or audiobooks. If I'm like really anxious or whatever, like trying to go to sleep mm-hmm. and I can't. I go that way, but like for me, sad music is more like, okay, do I if I want to like wallow in it and go further into these feelings, then I will then I'll just fully commit, you know. Yeah. But if I'm trying to escape it, usually no. Oh, I, I like that. You're just gonna run straight head like head first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like to like fully it, let go. myself feel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I never thought about it that way. Like, re- like you, you might be running away from it if you're not. And I just never thought about it that way. Okay, let's take a break here. And when we come back, let's talk advice for those wanting to stay creative during the most depressing time of the year. What would be your advice to someone who is like, 
you know, maybe musically leaning or artistic and they're just kind of feeling bummed. Like, Kyle, I feel like you have had to cope with a lot of anxiety and depression in your life and you're a creative person. So you have, so you're constantly solving problems on like how to get out of that mindset in a way and still make stuff and still be a creative person. Like, what is your advice to someone who might be having a rough time right now? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, In terms of like, if you are a creative type, I honestly think just doing your thing is like the best for coping with anxiety or sadness. And the hardest part is just like willing yourself to start it. And then for me, at least. And then once I start recording or writing or whatever, then it totally gets me out of my head and like transports me to a better place. Um, And then maybe if you're not as, if you don't have a project you're working on or whatever, I love like sonic meditation. Like you can look up like Pauline Oliveros. She has a great book of like sonic meditations where they, which are just like little listening activities, Mm -hmm. but it's also something that you can just stop and do at any moment. And it's just closing your eyes and noting the sounds around you and noting where they are in comparison to your ear and just trying to hear things in a way that you're actually thinking about them and not not just letting them be static background noise. And the reason that's really helpful for me is that like when I'm anxious or sad feeling, most of that is this feeling of being up in the top of my head um, and kind of detached from my body or my surroundings. So I think like listening um, and really deeply listening can be like such a powerful way to get out of your head and uh, ground yourself a little bit. Yeah. We talked a little bit bit about uh, some examples of like music that you like that is being made in the Northwest that some people might think is depressing, but others might actually, like you said, might find it comforting because either you can commiserate with someone uh, feeling Mm -hmm. something like you are or because you could use it to feel presence in a sense. Like what are some of your favorite Pacific Northwest artists that um, you think might evoke those feelings? Yeah, so I already mentioned a lot of them, but uh, some other ones I didn't mention, like in Portland, uh, Helvetia is really good. And then uh, Black Belt Eagle Scout is a really awesome band. Alluvium is a really nice ambient artist from Portland that's kind of like a big cocoon of sound. is really helpful like i think it's great and also you've made me think about stuff i haven't thought about in a long time <laughs> like yeah. just like thinking about like why people like music <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah no i feel that too i've had times where i didn't didn't want to be at shows at all or it was just like i think it's more social stuff that mm-hmm. gets to me though than actually just the sound but right yeah i totally feel you on that And now for your microdose of news. Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps says he's pushing city and state police to do more to protect pedestrians. Maps, newly in charge of the Portland Bureau of Transportation, told KATU that he's hoping to bring down Portland's record high pedestrian fatality rate by 10% this year. His plan? Continuing to invest in infrastructure like pedestrian crosswalks, better lighting, and I quote, getting back into the business of traffic enforcement. And F-15 fighters took off from Portland for a quick trip to Montana this past weekend in pursuit of an unidentified flying object. Now, there's been a surge of mysterious activity regarding UFOs across the country after a suspected Chinese spy balloon was shot down earlier this month. The jets from Portland didn't ultimately find their target, and now government officials are saying these spottings are assumed to be commercial or benign objects. That's what they would say. Plus, an update on the state liquor controversy. Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission Director Steve Marks resigned from his job this week. And if you remember last week, Governor Tina Kotek asked for his resignation after it was discovered Marks and other heads at OLCC were keeping high shelf bourbon for themselves instead of releasing it to the public. For more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link into the show notes. 
Well, that's all for today here on CityCast Portland. If you have any ideas for what we should be looking into, shoot us an email at portland at citycast.fm or leave us a voicemail at 503-208-5448. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's.